All right, guys, we're gonna bring your next comic. Your next comic. Uh, he told me to call him a nerd, but I am a nerd. He looks much cooler than I do, so I'm gonna call him awesome. Ladies and gentlemen, Chris Kirk, and Kirk. In my free time, I watch my fair share of TV. My fair share, of course, I mean that something has to be on 24-7. <laughs> Even if there's nothing interesting, I am conditioned to turn something on and press my nose against the screen. <laughs> Case in point, last year I found myself watching President Obama's first State of the Union address. I don't give a shit about that. <laughs> Although I do find it amusing counting how many times Congress gives him a standing ovation. It's like every word out of Obama's mouth is the most brilliant, most beautiful poem Congress has ever heard. Like, the State of the Union is shown uncut, no commercials in between, no matter how long it is. But what if it did? <laughs> what if the State of the Union had commercials? I mean, the government doesn't magically attain money, right? And they're all out of bailout money. Uh, speaking of bailouts, I'm not going to impersonate Obama in this bit. Because whenever I do, it always turns into Hank Hill from King of the Hill, you know? <laughs> we want hope. And we want change. And we want propane and propane accessories. <laughs> Damn it, Bobby! So, let's pretend it's 2005 again when W was back in the White House. Ooh, I know, I know, I know, I know. Anyway, if there were commercials, uh, like, how would they be presented? Like, would some cheesy announcer do that during downtime, or would the president do it himself? We're returning to the State of the Union right after these messages. <laughs> Don't change the channel unless it's two, four, five, seven, nine, or eleven, because that's all me. <laughs> <laughs> or maybe they would have like those dramatic cutaways, like on Deal or No Deal. My cabinet and I have devised a plan to eradicate terrorism once and for all, and I'm going to reveal this plan when we come back. <laughs> <laughs> and what kind of commercials would they even show? Like, would the president have his own batch of commercials? Hi, I'm George W. Bush, and I approve this message from Taco Bell. <laughs> but I don't approve of the new black taco. George Bush does not care about black tacos. <laughs> Actually, they would probably make them do product placement within the speech itself. We will take a big bite out of Al-Qaeda's regime. Just like I take a bite out of this Big Mac. I'm loving it. We will rebuild New Orleans. We will clean up the mess Katrina left behind. We'll act like a giant sponge. Just like SpongeBob SquarePants. You know, Squidward kind of reminds me of Dick. Except Squidward's never shot a guy's face off yet. <laughs> hey, SpongeBob, you want to go hunt for quail? <laughs> uh, actually, they probably do like a cross promotion thing. Like the night before the address, you'll suddenly see Bush in Bikini Bottom. I'm ready, I'm ready, I'm ready, I'm ready. Hey, Dick, you want to go jellyfishing? Nah, go away, George. I'm busy painting myself a new pacemaker. <laughs> So, a couple months ago, I got to check out the new City Field. Yes, I'm a Mets fan. I don't need your pity. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And after a ball game is over, what does every guy do? Run to the bathroom. I swear, it's the only time there's ever a line in the men's room. Unlike the ladies' room, where there's always a line that never moves. Seriously, what are you doing in there? How long does it take you to touch up your hair, fix your lipstick, powder your vagina, whatever the fuck you do? <laughs> Us, we pee, maybe we wash our hands, then we're out. <laughs> so when I was online to pee, I noticed the urinals in their unusual design. Quite literally, there was a line of eight or nine holes in the wall with white buckets, bowls type, type stuff attached to the front. We were peeing into public Buckets. It was really awkward, especially since there weren't any walls on the side for privacy. I had to like hide my dick in my hand. <laughs> Which isn't easy when it's 20 inches long, bro. <laughs> oh, I'm kidding, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. 
It's only ten. Well, more like seven. Okay, then five and a half. Okay, it's a Dan Murphy, all right. But while peeing, I, I came to a realization. Men's room's peeing apparatuses are becoming easier and more convenient to use. You know, at first it was only the toilet. Terribly inconvenient for peeing. You had to bend down to flush. There was always someone's pubes on the seat. You had to aim so they didn't miss the bowl. And if someone, before you did pee on the seat, or even worse, poop on the seat, you wouldn't be anywhere near that toilet. So man invented the urinal. You, the handle was at eye level, you were guaranteed not to miss your target, and very rarely would you hear yourself cry, All right, who left the dookie in the urinal? <laughs> okay. But... But there was still that pubes on the handle problem, so the automatic flusher was created. But what if it went while we were going? That would completely throw off our concentration. Or give us a boner. And you can't properly take a piss when you're at full mass. So some genius at the Piss Institute got to thinking, hey, I got an idea. Why don't we get rid of the whole flushing thingy altogether? Why don't we just make everyone pee into a big bucket? Hey, <laughs> <laughs> pee bucket. That's my time, guys. Thanks. Let's go Mets! Chris Kirk, let him hear it! <laughs>